she is the brightest and most innovative. The best campaign strategist in the game. Responsible for the greatest political upset in history. You're a fighter, Jane. I'm giving you another shot at the title. It's a presidential campaign in South America. Fragile democracy, economy in real trouble. Our candidate is considered arrogant and out of touch with people's lives. How far are you behind? 28 points. <laughs> the opposition has hired their own American, Pat Candy. Jane Bodine. Pat. So what are you doing here? I thought you retired or gave up or something. What happened to your hair? So you still got a great sense of humor. How many times have you gone against Candy? Three or four times. How many times has he beat you? Uh, three or four times. <laughs> If you want to win, we're going to have to take risks. You're my tracker. Every event that Rivera attends, every speech, you tape it. If security beats you up, you are doing your job right. Get that beating on tape. Wake up. This is war. There's only one wrong in this. Only one, and that is losing. Maybe check and see if uh, anyone understood that. Levanten la mano si hablan inglés. Gracias. If you should feel something during the interview, like if you have some tears, could you just turn towards the camera? Whoa, whoa, look at him. This is it. Yes! Oh. I lose to candy now, I swear to God. This actually kind of matters, Jane. This country could go under. We're talking about people's lives. You like to pretend you're not one of us. If you fight with monsters for too long, you become a monster. No solution. No solution. Eddie, this is this your neighborhood? This is where you live? People will get hurt. What are you gonna do? We are trying to save people's lives. These are the stakes. And I'm not gonna stand by and watch as this nation falls apart. This is no longer an election. This is a crisis. We're going to shoot the commercial, por favor. Lamas. This animal would lead us to prosperity. Oh. No, 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 Marco! It's like he killed himself rather than be in one of our commercials. There's actually a lot riding on this movie behind the scenes. And that's because it's already gotten a decent amount of publicity for being a movie where the lead role is gender swapped and that it was originally written for a male actor, but then they of course changed it up so Sandra Bullock could star. Uh, so what happened? Well, Sandra Bullock, unhappy with the roles that were being offered to her, uh, especially after winning an Oscar, put out a call uh, across town saying, are there any scripts out there that producers would be okay with changing the male lead to a female lead? And George Clooney and Grant Heslov said, we'd be cool uh, with doing it for this film, are you interested? And of course, uh, she said yes, and you see this film before you now. Uh, and the last time that this really happened, that at least the public was aware of, was Angelina Jolie in Salt. That was originally something Tom Cruise was going to star in, but then they, they changed it up so that Angelina Jolie uh, could take the lead role. And I think that that was a mixed bag. It did pretty well at the box office, but it didn't perform quite like uh, an actioner does with a male lead, uh, and they never made Assault 2. So that was kind of, you know, a strike again uh, gender swapping lead roles, right? So uh, we're hoping to have a win here. And I, I think that's the first test for this trailer. Does it seem like a movie where they only just switched uh, the gender of the lead? Did they just change he to she in the script? And I have to say, in my disappointment, that doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, they seem to have very much softened it, and it very much seems uh, like it's being told from the, you know, quote unquote, women's perspective, like it's a chick flick. Uh, it's not directed by Nancy Myers but it could be, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's actually produced, uh, directed by uh, David Gordon Green, who has a, a shaky track record himself in comedy. Uh, but, you know, I think you would think that would push it more into the gender neutral zone. And that's really what you're looking for here. Something that doesn't seem like it's, it's written for any gender. Uh, it's just supposed to be a good political thriller. And again, I'm not seeing that here. Uh, I'm impressed with certain parts of the, of, of the package of this film that's being presented to us. I like the idea of political, um, uh, you know, strategists working outside the United States. This is such an industry that they can even, uh, uh, you know, go abroad. It's not just something that's applied here to the United States. And that our way of doing politics is uh, perhaps more universal than we would like it to be. 
Uh, I think Anthony Mackie, it's great to see him, you know, stretching his wings beyond the role of Falcon, which he desperately needs to do. And I'm always happy to see Billy Bob Thornton. I really love, I've always loved his work, but I loved him in Fargo. I want to see him get more work off of that because, of course, that's not a, a series where, you know, actors return season to season. So he got the only boost he's going to get out of it. Uh, and it's been minimal. So uh, I think having him here in this movie is a plus for me, but I don't know what it says about the movie that these are the only kind of uh, gigs he's able to land. I mean, th his being in this movie, kind of doing like a James Carville impersonation, puts this in league with The Judge, the only other film that Billy Bob Thornton's really been able to land after Fargo. So uh, that's not good company to be in. So Sandra Bullock, I really like Sandra Bullock's work. I really like her as an actress. Uh, I think she can do very well at the box office, obviously. Uh, but I think if this movie is going to do well at the box office, it's going to be on the strength of Sandra Bullock and her fan base, uh, and not so much the movie itself, which again is disappointing. I was watching this very carefully to see how they um, adapted it for her, and I, I think that you know, there's still a ways to go where apparently they feel to adapt this movie for uh, a female lead, more needs to be changed than just the pronouns. But I'm curious, what do you think? Uh, now that you know that extra bit of information, can you see this role exactly as it's playing being played being written for a guy and also I have to say you know you see things a little differently I don't know if they would have kept the joke in where he you know gives a speech and you know to his uh, to the campaign office and nobody speaks English but the translator doesn't bother to tell him I mean uh, that's really undermining her authority and I, you know as, uh, as a female viewer and you know uh, someone in business uh, that's really maddening to me and, and seems you know very disrespectful so uh, I think you know I'm, I don't know what kind of male role it was originally, uh, but it's not translating well to a female role at all. Uh, but again, I'm curious to hear what you think. Again, this calls to mind Narcos. I've been bringing that uh, show up a lot lately. Beast of No Nation is very derivative of that. And then, of course, they're talking a lot about political campaigns with Pablo Escobar in the uh, Narcos uh, Netflix TV series. And it takes place in a similar setting with a similar, somewhat similar situation. So that reminds me of it as well. But right now, I'm seeing, you know, uh, something that's pandering to the female audience. Uh, and seems a little bit HBO movie-like rather than a, a hard-hitting film. But we'll see. Sandra Bullock, you know, she's been able to pull a lot of movies into, you know, overperforming territory, so I wouldn't put it... Uh, you know, I wouldn't think that she couldn't possibly do it here. But again, curious to what you think. Write your thoughts down below. I look forward to continuing the conversation with you in the comments. Uh, and you can check out some other episodes right now. 